Welcome to the whiskey trap. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Did you just whiskey say whiskey? Vaults. Welcome Lord. to the whiskey vault. Hi. What? The, where's my knife? Here it is. Inauspicious start. Yeah. TJ Jolstrom, you magnificent bastard. Again. This is what is Glyph for those that missed the first episode? Glyph is episode. a company in San Francisco yeah. that is taking vodka, corn vodka, and analyzing whiskey, mm -hmm. bourbon, scotch, things, mm -hmm. and uh, flavoring, creating the molecular structure of aged whiskey, flavoring, and identifying the individual chemical molecule components and creating flavoring out of that, flavoring. and adding it to vodka to recreate an aged whiskey. Right. So, flavoring vodka to try and make it taste like whiskey. Well, that's, huh. So first thing that's not really whiskey-ish, <laughs> typically what you're going for in a whiskey is, you take this off and the cork comes out. <laughs> now you're just, <laughs> that's such a dick move. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'd be funny to shit on them right now, but even some of the biggest brands in the world, we've had the cap yeah. come off the cork. All right. There we go. Well, we're gonna have to find a new cork. Okay. Um, okay. So this is what they call spice, which is their answer to bourbon. So molecular bourbon. Okay. Maybe that's the category it should be in. Molecular whiskey. Just period as its own category, and they're the only contender. <laughs> I mean, it's but it, there's already a category. It's the flavored whiskey. Flavored whiskeys. And yeah. it's really not even an official category. It's distilled spirit specialty. Hey, smell that. It's darker than the last one. Okay. Interesting. I cut like a grape. Yeah. Oh, yes, grape. Yeah. Okay, so in the first glyph that we did, we were hopeful but not optimistic. And mm. it, well, it wasn't as bad as I was braced for. I was right. Like, it, was like, it could have been. Uh, but also, what they were, like the shot they were calling. It wasn't the home run that they were saying it was. It was in the direction of whiskey, but it did not go over the fence. But I see where they were going. It's just standalone, a spirit in a bottle. Would I compare it to another $30 whiskey and feel good about recommending that one? No. no. Uh, but this though, I, I actually, surprisingly, the nose, hmm, not bad. It's, uh, the grape was really dominant. Oh, very grapey. Grape with some, uh, Apple underneath it. You know what it is? It's a grape bubble gum. Oh yeah, like that purple bubble gum. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what was it called? Grape Grape Delicious? Is that a thing? Something like that. Yeah. And then vanilla. Oh, if he, I was you know really what's... searching, I would say maybe some oak wood notes. Okay, take that grape, and then also right next to it, think about blueberry muffin. Oh yeah, bready blueberries. Yeah. yeah. That is a weird combination of smells. Yeah, it's like the blueberry muffin blueberries. All right. Hmm. That one's weird. Almost medicinal. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's... Oh, what's going on? Uh-uh. Mm. No, the other no, one... No. The Hold other on. one... It keeps building. It does. It grows. It unfurls. It gets like cough syrupy, <laughs> and then it gets cinnamon, but then the cinnamon goes away, and then it turns back to grape, and then it gets dry, right. and then it's ethanol and burny. You know, like the, the taste of medicine is like Robitussin or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't like it. No. And it clings to your tongue. Yeah, and you try to w water, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Because it just is, clings to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of that. Damn. Well, honestly, man, the, the, the first one we had, mm -hmm. so well, maybe they're kind of... You know, they're, they're, they're calling some shots, falling short, but they're they're going in the right direction. This, no, this is not going in the right direction. No, I was going to compare it to a bourbon, but like now oh. I just want to pour a bourbon so I can drink something else. <laughs> no. What uh, what will we compare it to? Like I don't know the glyph guys. I'm I'm sorry guys. I like the other one better than this. This is not. Is there any bourbon no. you can think of? Any bourbon, any... literally, any bourbon. Let's just get the cheapest. Just grab, just spin White a circle, label grab Jim something. Beam. I do think I need, oh gosh. Ugh. It's, no, it's just. No. That's the most dramatic I've ever seen you react to No, it's just, something. it's really not good. It, honestly, if this was the first one we had, it set the bar low, mm -hmm. then the, the, the other one that we had Pleasantly surprised. I'd be like, okay, 
Well, we're building. We're, but this is not building. This is, no. Son of a bitch. Oh, Jim Beam. I kind of need to... There we go. Come on, the honey and the peanut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some dusty floors and a honky-tonk, y'all. Mmm. There's the vanilla cream, but it's soft and kind of buttery comparatively. Comparatively. Right. So... This is oily and bitey at the same time, and I don't you know wanna, how. You want to make any whiskey look freaking amazing. Just pour that first? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all about gonna, the comparative taste. We're going to start raving about Glyph now. Uh, I mean, about Jim Beam, Joe, Jim White Beam. Label. You know, if all you've ever known is Glyph, mm -hmm. then it is a phenomenal, game-changing whiskey. I feel compelled to keep going back to this just to see if it changes up after you get it in you. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna, but I don't wanna. Hmm. Oh. You know what? It, it, the, the experience that I had the first time around that was so off-putting. Mm -hmm. There was this moment where, okay, this is kind of artificial grapey for a bourbon, but I can see a bit of a... Well, hold on, what the hell? Oh, God. What's happening? Oh, yeah. oh. oh God, no. Oh, it's, oh, it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly what happened to me. It turns into perfumey something or other. Like potpourri. I mean, uh, you're not supposed to eat the potpourri. Yeah, you're really not. <laughs> well, now I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow's supposed to be scotch. <laughs> now, hold on, though. This is what they do. They kind of like, first, first bottle, they don't exceed, but they don't fall on their face. Yeah. So it's kind of like, bam, right there. And then you're like, where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? Then they just uh, fall on their face. Now they're set up for an amazing story oh, arc. Please. The redemption pour. Please be true. Let's uh, hit some comments. And I'll drink some Jim Beam. I can't. Here's it. The, whenever there's like um, things that aren't quite whiskey, they're trying to be whiskey. I mean, we've had in the past uh, people threaten us with lawsuits if we don't delete videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully these guys are cool, but we're opinions. not taking we're not taking it down. It's their opinion. Yeah, yeah, never do. Wouldn't say anything about their process. Yeah, Picconi, my guys, my guys, you should always turn the bottle upside down a few times upon first pouring. Alcohol and water slowly but surely are splitting into their own layers. If they stand on the, that's not really how things work. Thus. The first couple of pours are going to be very strong and not representative of the whole water alcohol blend. There's not separation no, that no, happens. No, here's the thing. Ethanol and water molecules bind together really strong. Mm. This is not oil and water. Right. Right? They're not going to separate into sections inside a bottle. Anyone who's ever told you that has no idea what they're talking about. Now, or maybe we don't have any idea. On anything like this that's like chill, filtered we live and all in the world stuff. of We live in a world of misinformation. There yeah. is no truth. Okay. You have to live your own truth. Anyway. What do your feelings tell you? Uh, any whiskey that's filtered a lot or chill filtered and scotch, this is irrelevant. It will change absolutely nothing. This whiskey could sit there for 20 years. As long as this is solid, it will never change. It didn't. It's not going to separate, not going to isolate. If you get unchill filtered or mm -hmm. like really heavy pot still whiskeys, right. you can sometimes see some bits start to float. All that That's is solids. Yeah. is the solids from the congeners. Right. And honestly, it's not going to change anything to toss the whiskey back together. You're not going to taste them individually. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. It, it's not isolating the bad. The only time you ever get bitter bad in the bottom that isolates is if there's barrel char mm -hmm. in the bottle that they didn't filter out. In which case, it might get really bitter, but that's very rare. That sounds like a tremendous amount of misinformation that does not align with my sources, uh, namely Piconi. Mm. And if you don't retract it, I will remove my music from Spotify. Okay. Please. <laughs> Please do. My music is amazing. Uh, no. I have the best music. No. Have you even heard my music? No. Okay. <laughs> Suzuki Senpai. Is there a list that we can access that shows which Japanese whiskey is actually Japanese whiskey? The best list that I've found so far is uh, Whiskey Richard in No Communication, a Japanese whiskey website. Uh, go check him out. He's got this whole pie chart looking graph thing. 
I don't know when it was updated last, but it's the most accurate one that I've seen. Okay, so I went back to the nose one last time. I had the weirdest memory. The smell of the inside of a cheap Halloween mask when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The that, rubber, gory, yeah, yeah, like the werewolf. Sugar rubber. Yeah. Yeah, same thing in a McDonald's squeeze toy. When the air, you squeeze it and the air comes out of the base. Oh, that's terrible. No. <laughs> no. no. Here's the fight. Stealing a drink. You fight me a fight for a friend. Steal me, you steal your livers. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs>